What do we do with these examples, right, where uh, the transition probabilities were 0, 1, 1, 0 and then uh, it keeps uh, switching in the evolution. So, there seems to be no limit of the powers of this matrix. So, what is the problem here? So, issue with M is is that uh, it has no way to go from the state space element 1, state 1 to, st to itself okay? and similarly from state 2 to 2. So, this probability is 0. Right? This is what m110 means. So, since there is, uh, it is not the case that from any i you can go to any j with positive probability. Okay, so, because of that it is uh, somehow not behaving in the most natural way. Okay, similarly, issue with m square is that uh, m21 is 0. Right, so, 2 to 1 not possible. Uh, not this, 1 2 is 0. So, no way to move 1 to 2. Right, so, it gets actually, yeah, the exploration in the evolution is not happening uh, in the best way because of these problems, because of these hurdles. So, the transition is not allowing you to go from every i to every j with some chance. It makes the chance actually 0, exactly 0. So, let us exclude these examples. So, how do you exclude them? You look at uh, processes where every i to j there is some chance of reaching. So, Markov chain given by mu and m is called regular ok, regular or natural if there exists uh, a time m, let us call it just time. So, let there exist a time t at which point the, the transition probabilities are all positive such that for all i j in s m to the t i j is positive, okay, that is m to the t has all entries positive okay, and m to the t has only positive entries. So, that is then a point after which the Markov chain will start behaving in a much better way and you can understand the evolution better, okay, because there is a fair chance, uh, well, it may not be fair, but at least there is some chance that you can go from any i to any j, okay. It is not that the evolution is excluding some option completely out. So, every transition is allowed. Okay, that is the good thing about regular Markov chain.
after a point it becomes nice and let us then immediately prove uh, a simple property of these. So, if m raised to t has all entries positive then so does m raised to t plus 1. Okay, so, once you reach this point where all transitions are allowed, then after that point of time, that is always the case. How do you show this? So, first you note that uh, each row of M has some entry positive. Why is that the case? Well, because the otherwise the row will be the 0 row and then the sum will not be 1, right. So, at least some, some entry is positive. It may be only one entry in which case it will be 1. So, each row in each row of M, uh, some entry is positive. So, now you look at M times M to the T. Right. So, you are multiplying a row of m with columns of m to the t. Now, columns of m to the t, every entry is positive. So, this has also every entry positive. Right, because you pick this and let us say look at the first row of m, pick the position, the entry which is positive and just multiply that with, if you multiply it with any column corresponding location of m to the t, you will have a positive contribution. This here we are also using the fact that since uh, negative entries are not there and others uh, greater than equal to 0, that is also there, right. So, some entry in every row is positive and the others are non-negative. So, because of that, that positive contribution will remain positive, strictly positive. Okay, so that is the proof. Right, so this is why regularity is a very nice condition because once m to the t satisfies uh, all positive entries, it will remain true forever beyond that point. So, for uh, regular m, m square has a nice physical interpretation. Which is that its ith row is the ith row of m times m. So, uh, what is happening here is uh, the ith row, oh let me first correct this, hmm, let me correct this. For such m to the t, m to the t plus 1 has a nice physical interpretation because uh, if you look at the ith row then again it is just this. Now, in fact, I have to do a bit differently. So, now m to the t ith row times m. 
Right. So, m to the t has uh, positive entries. So, this ith row is also positive. Every entry is positive. So, when you multiply with a column in m, what is happening is you are taking an average okay, in, uh, and you are not leaving anything out because m to the t has positive entries. So, the average actually gives some positive weight to every entry in the first column of m, let us say. So, it is like uh, averaging the rows of m without leaving any out. So, every time you are multiplying by m, you are actually just keep taking the average, that is the intuition. So, what happens if you take this average infinitely, right, for a long time, again and again, if you average out, then you tend to get all things equal. So, you ask the question, what happens if you do this many times? many, many times. Right? So, this is the guiding question and the guiding intuition which will lead you to a major theorem which describes the limit. So, this is a version of Perron Frobenius theorem. It's very old in matrix uh, analysis. So it says that if M is the transition matrix of a regular Markov chain. then its limit, limit of its powers is a matrix which is given by a product of uh, the one column vector and some other row vector. where 1 bar is all one column vector and uh, W is some co column vector, W is some probability distribution. Okay, so, we are actually this theorem is saying things, but also defining things. So, assuming regularity, it is saying that the limit actually exists, right. This is uh, it is you are multiplying a column with a row. So, you will get a matrix, square matrix, which will which will have rank 1. So, 1 is uh, basically it has all 1s and uh, W is some probability distribution. So, let us uh, interpret this. So, this W is called uh, the topic that we started studying, stationary distribution. And uh, this uh, for any initial distribution, uh, 
mu what is now the limit of mu m to the n so that will be by the theorem it will be mu times 1 bar times w transpose now mu uh, sorry this uh, the rho so mu transpose so mu transpose is a rho multiplied with the column vector 1 but that you know is the value of mu right which is 1 so this is just w transpose so what you see is that in the limit it doesn't matter what mu was okay this is independent is independent of mu so that is the amazing thing that no matter what the starting point is uh, the end point is the same if you wait long enough okay so it's this stationary distribution is very fundamental it again tells you something about the memorylessness okay so this this kind of evolution is actually memoryless it doesn't remember what it started from it just remembers the transition probability so this w is only dependent on m not mu and uh, another third thing is that uh, this uh, matrix 1 dot w transpose it has rank 1 ok so in the end you can start with any m of any rank stochastic matrix but ultimately the rank in the limit becomes 1 right so this is a very important and highly unexpected uh, theorem and this shows why Markov chains are uh, structurally uh, so important. Okay, so how do you show this? What is the proof? So we will take a take an intuitive route. we will not go into the deep analysis uh, of limit etc we will just give you a more intuitive sketch so that you can read the proof somewhere else formalize let us just uh, first look at the idea of this so we will show that uh, show that the action m on a vector let us call it uh, let us call the result v1 so this matrix action the entries of v1 get closer each other compared to those in v0 ok so you start with the i mean view matrix m as a linear transformation in other words you multiply m with a column vector you will get another column vector call it v1 what we will show very soon is that uh, whatever were the en entries in v0 what the difference between maximum and minimum that difference will shrink in this matrix action okay so in v1 the difference will be smaller so if you continue doing this action infinitely many times ultimately the transformation 
m to the n will make all the entries equal. Okay, so v n will have equal entries, so it will become a scalar. So in the end, in the limit, it it means that uh, m to the n dot v zero is a scalar. That is the bulk of the proof. Okay, and then based on this, we will finish the theorem statement. So let's attempt this. Let's implement this. So define. Uh, so inside V zero, max is let's say M zero, and min is small m zero. In the vector v one, max is m one, min is small m one. Okay, and we are interested in the differences. How has the difference changed? So let uh, the matrix M have minimum entry. Delta, right? Can delta be zero? Yes, it can be zero. But since we are assuming uh, it to be a regular Markov chain, so at some point, m to the t will have only positive entries. So let us assume that. So without loss of generality, delta is positive. Else we work with. m to the t of positive entries okay so let us uh, assume that delta is positive that's the min entry in the matrix okay the other thing is Here, uh, that delta cannot exceed half. Okay, minimum cannot be too large. Why? Because uh, after all, this uh, matrix M is stochastic, so the row sum has to be one at all times. If delta is large, then that will exceed. It will go beyond one. If delta is greater than half, then it would mean that uh, some row sum, a row sum in M is actually more than S by. I mean, it is at least S times delta, which is then more than S by two. Now, state space is at least two, right? So this is. Uh, Greater than one. That's a contradiction. Right? So delta cannot be greater than half. It's between uh, half and zero, but strictly positive. Okay. So now let us look at the uh, entries in V one. So consider the image vector V one m times V zero. so observe that uh, each entry in v1 is at most what so you have to look at uh, entries that you get when you multiply a row of m with the vector v0 so the entries of the row let's say the first row of m it has entries at least delta and v0 the entries are in the range 
small m0 to big m0. So, uh, an upper bound is big m0 times 1 minus delta plus small m0 times delta. This is an upper bound. Why? Because this is greater than half. right and this is less than equal to half. So, uh, the larger entries essentially the larger entries in V0, they can contribute at most uh, M0 times 1 minus delta okay, and the smaller entries can contribute this much. So, this is the this is the basic idea you have to prove this by using uh, rho sum to be 1 essentially. So, use that uh, rho sum in m is 1. Okay, so, uh, since the rho sum is 1 and you know the minimum is delta, so the, the range is delta to I mean the delta part and then the 1 minus delta part. Now, the bigger part, the maximum contribution you can get from that is if you multiply it with m0. Okay, and then the rest delta part is will come from m0. So, that is an upper bound. What is a lower bound? So, each entry in V1 is at least now the reverse. So, combine M0 with the smaller part and the smaller part with larger part. Okay, so, this will be the bound this again you show by similar arguments. Delta is uh, less than equal to half and uh, rho sum in m is 1. So, based on this we will finish the proof uh, next time.